In this video, I want to give some tips specifically for working in virtual groups, so groups working at a distance using various uh, communication technologies to work together as opposed to working face-to-face. -face. So my first tip is to develop early on, right at the beginning, develop a communication charter. Um, this is really a document that normalizes communication practices, so it basically says, here's what we're going to do, and here's how we're going to communicate, and, and uh, so um, it's very important that you... Uh, document that early and lay out those expectations early. Um, you know, sometimes you'll have implicit expectations like uh, don't call each other names and things like that when you're adults, but but you need some explicit normalizations as well, like we're going to communicate through email or we're going to meet at this time and everybody's expected to attend, this is expected to be a priority and so forth, those types of things that you very explicitly lay out and uh, document very early on. You also want to be sure that you're creating collaboratively very early in the process. So you need to, to get together um, and figure these things out, not just have one person dictate them to everybody else, but uh, you, this needs to be created uh, very collaboratively with everybody involved, everybody in the group involved in uh, setting these expectations and these normalizations. So you want to include some things like an official channel of group communication so that you don't have some people texting and some people emailing and some people calling on the phone and some people whatever. You want to n normalize, okay, for, you know, asynchronous communication when we're not all together, we're going to use email or we're going to use this specific text chain or whatever. And then synchronous communication, we're going to communicate, we're going to use Skype or we're going to use Zoom or we're going to use, uh, you know, Microsoft Team or whatever you're going to use normalize those few official channels of communication so you don't have people scattered all over the place using different forms of communication at all times. It, not only does it get chaotic and confusing, but people don't know what to do, and, and the best way to do things is to get lost in, in the midst of all that chaos. So organize an official chain of communication or channel of communication uh, very early on. You also want to, as I said before, set some rules of behavior for sync meetings, things like you know, be in a space where you're not constantly distracted by, you know, uh, people coming in and out, set that time aside, lock your door, make sure people know you're there, that type of rule. Um, don't multitask when you're in a, in a synchronous meeting, for example. So don't be uh, on this meeting, but really, you know, you're muted and don't have your camera on so that you can play solitaire, or you can answer emails or whatever you're doing. You know, be present, set those types of rules for that. Uh, maybe put the dogs in the other room so people don't have to listen to your uh, dogs barking at all times while you're while you're doing those types of things. So set some standards of expect, expectation for how people will behave and, and what's going to happen during these sync meetings. Uh, set an expectation for response times. This is another basic thing you could establish in a communication charter. It, you know, if we're using email for our official channel of group communication and team communication, if we're using email, then the expectation is that you respond to that email within, you know, four business hours or four, you know, 24 hours to overall or whatever, that all responses take place during this set of time. Now, you do need to, to uh, recognize that if you may have people in different time zones and you may have people across the world, depending on uh, where your team is located and, and how it's situated. So you need to, to have that in mind and be sensitive to that as well. You can't say you need to respond within two hours when somebody may be sending an email at noon their time, but it's middle of the night wherever another team member is. That's not really fair. So make sure you give adequate time, but that's another one of those things collaboratively. You need to decide what's a reasonable amount of time for us to expect people to respond to these emails before we move on. Otherwise, you just have this stuff sitting out there uh, forever and it really slows group processes down. So, Okay, in addition to a communication charter, you need to think early on about accountability uh, and set some standards for accountability. So it's very possible and very easy in a group environment to share that leadership, to, to share aspects of leadership and to to, you know, again, the many hands make light work. That's part of what makes group groups effective as a team is that you have people that can pitch in. So it's okay to share leadership of these things and and uh, to share leadership of the group at times, depending on what skills people have and what they may be bringing to the table. You can share that leadership across the board. But I would suggest too that you have what I what I call an accountability manager, um, somebody who's responsible for keeping track of all these things, whether it's whatever you call them, whether it's a secretary, whether it's a you know accountability manager, whether it's a group leader or whatever. But somebody needs to be responsible for saying, okay, who's responsible for what, and documenting all this and and all that kind of thing, and following up with people about it too. In a group, you need to set that expectation early that that. If you're not meeting your, uh, your, your your role here, then we're going to call you out on it. We're going to not not in a mean way, but we're going to let you know. Look, you were supposed to have this done by this deadline, and it's not here. So when can we expect that? You need somebody who can step up and play that role as well, kind of the bad cop role, uh, and and 
you know, keeping people on track. So you can share leadership and share creativity and all that kind of stuff in, in a virtual group, and that works out really well. But you do need somebody who's kind of responsible for saying, okay, are we on track? Are people doing what they're supposed to be doing? And that kind of thing. And along those lines, I would encourage you to make your commitments and timelines publicly trackable. Even if it's just a very basic, you know, Excel spreadsheet like this where you've got, you know, a list of tasks laid out and who's responsible for them, but, but make that uh, publicly trackable either in a shared document or on a, on a, on a website somehow or somehow that you, uh, that you all know, okay, who's responsible for what? When is this due? What exactly is happening with it? Uh, and can we update information here on this? So, uh, a shared document really works well for that in a very simple format, just a shared spreadsheet or Excel type document. Uh, but make those commitments and, and timelines publicly trackable, <clears throat> partly for accountability, partly so that people know that they're being watched and know that, you know, it can put a little pressure on people, which can be good to say, well, I've got this deadline and people know it, so I need to meet it and, and I've committed to this. <clears throat> but also just so the whole group kind of has an idea of what's going on and, and when they can expect certain things to be done. So make those uh, publicly trackable and, and available to the entire group. So, so accountability is important. It's important that we keep each other accountable and we have systems in place to keep people accountable in a group as well, a virtual group in particular. You also need to pick the right tech tool uh, for the right job, really. So depending on what it is you're trying to accomplish, you, you need to pick. There's so many different types of technology available now that make group work so much more effective and and uh, and possible from great distances across the globe. Uh, but you need to pick the right tech tool for the jobs that you have in this particular uh, virtual team. So um, first of all, as we said before, you need to identify the channels that you're going to be using, and then you need to stick to them. So pick the right tech tool. What's going to work for you? I would encourage you to have at least one for asynchronous communication, like email, texting, things like that, uh, and then another for synchronous communication, communication that's happening you know, at the same time. So pick a, pick a system and pick a tool that works for everybody there. If you're working in a company, you may all have the same thing anyway. You may all have Microsoft Team, or you may all have Zoom, or you may all have uh, Adobe Connect, or whatever. Uh, and so you could easily use that and pick that for a sync channel. Um, but if not, then you need to, to identify very early on, what are we going to use, and then stick to it. So don't say early on, okay, we're going to use Microsoft Teams to connect and do our synchronous meetings and that kind of stuff, and, and then all of a sudden send out an invitation for a Skype meeting. That's not, that's not effective. You need to identify these things and stick, upon, uh, stick to these agreed upon channels um, throughout the entire process. Mix and match resources for the greatest impact. So that doesn't mean, yeah, so what we're talking about here is you can use a variety of these tools. Now, pick the, use the ones you've picked in advance, but, but it can make, uh, for example, a, a synchronous meeting go much more uh, efficiently and effectively if you beforehand send out via email or whatever the, the asynchronous channel you've agreed upon, if you send out a summary of what that meeting is going to be about and any materials that the people might need to review beforehand, that they could do that beforehand, uh, that'll be helpful. So when you're together synchronously, um, it eliminates having to say, okay, everybody, take a minute to review this document that I'm sending to you now. Get all that out in advance using your asynchronous communication and then use the sync communication uh, paired with that to, to follow up on those materials and discuss decision points and, and take votes or whatever you need to do to reach a consensus and, and get a decision. And then afterwards, go back to your asynchronous and say, okay, here's what we discussed in this meeting. Here's a summary. So you can, you can use these tools, uh, you can integrate these tools and use them uh, effectively um, together uh, to do all that type of stuff. So uh, mix and match those resources to achieve the greatest impact. Don't just rely on asynchronous or synchronous. Use them both together to, to achieve that impact. Uh, you can also find some helpful apps. Again, there's all kinds of technology out there right now. So uh, I'm not even going to try and give you a list of all the things that are available, but just some examples. You can find these helpful apps that, that will help you be more efficient and effective as a team, such as uh, Doodle is something that I've, I've used. It's, a, it's an online application that I've used at uh, times with groups for helping to arrange meeting times. It allows you to just lay out a list of times that, you know, and, and have the group members then say, okay, this would work for me, this would not work for me. So they pick the times that they would be available. And then you can kind of see who, which time would hit the most, uh, the broadest amount of people, the most amount of, you know, most people in the group. You may not hit everybody, but at least then you're, you're giving people the option to say, here's when I'm available, here's when I'm not available, and pick the time that, uh, Otherwise, you get you get like 700 emails back and forth saying, okay, what about Tuesday at 2? Nope, that one from, okay, so what about Monday at noon? Nope, that one from, so, so uh, Doodle allows you to just kind of organize that a little more effectively. 
you can use document sharing for collaboration. I already mentioned one, for example, uh, the um, for tracking the, the commitments people have made, the commitments and the timelines that people have made, and you can use uh, document sharing for that. You can use document sharing if, you, if your group is, is required to produce a document of some sort, uh, then you can use document sharing to allow everybody to collaborate on that. Um, and, and not even have to do it synchronously so that, that everybody can pitch in a little more effectively there and it doesn't put the burden on one person to have to put that document together entirely. Uh, you'll still need somebody to kind of edit and oversee everything, but uh, but you can use document sharing for a lot of different things, to pass things around, um, to you know, especially if you're too big for email or too inconvenient to email, you can use document sharing for those types of things. So a good document sharing tool can be uh, helpful for, for collaboration and they're readily available now too. So you have all these different apps, and I've already mentioned things like Microsoft Teams and Zoom, and you just need to pick the right tech tool. So it's important to find one that works, that is going to work for your team and your group, and, and then it's also important to stick to it and, and use it consistently so you don't have people, again, using 17 different apps all for the same thing and then trying to pull it all together. You want to pick the right tech tool uh, for the right job and then use it effectively and consistently. So finally, I want to talk about communicating competently. This is something we talk a lot about in communication, and so it's important that we communicate competently in groups as well. So just a couple of quick tips. Keep the channel in mind. Uh, when you're thinking about things like, you know, what, what does this channel offer in terms of leanness or richness? So by which we mean, uh, you know, texting, for example, is very lean. It doesn't offer the, the, the fullness of nonverbal communication and things like that, so it's very lean, it's very text-oriented, as opposed to face-to-face -to -face communication, which is very rich, and it offers uh, all of that uh, opportunity to not only see, uh, and not only hear the words, but also hear how they're said, and see the gesturing, and the facial expressions, and all that kind of stuff. So, and then you have everything in between there, so synchronous communication can be a little bit uh, of, of both, you know, you can see people, but it's also, you don't see everything, and it, it can be delayed and things, so but keep that channel in mind. Is this channel lean or channel rich, and how that how does that interpret how does that affect how I interpret this message and how I read this message and so and how I respond? <coughs> Excuse me. Synchronous and asynchronous communication is another thing to keep in mind. I've mentioned that a couple of times now. Synchronous meaning it's happening in real time. You're all in the same place at the same time, or at least you know communicating at the same time in the in the same environment here uh, versus asynchronous things like texting email which you, you send out and then it's not an immediate it's not a real-time situation so keep that channel in mind if you have a, if you have an urgent message and you send it via email that's asynchronous communication it may not get responded to uh, you know right away but uh, but if so if you need an immediate answer then you need to rely on more synchronous communication but keep the channel in mind and, and their limitations and their strengths uh, based on what you are trying to accomplish as well Remember that in groups, especially when you're when you're communicating asynchronously, syntax matters, grammar matters. There's a big difference between let's eat grandma and let's eat grandma. That comma makes a huge dish, difference there. In, in this case, as this indicates, punctuation saves lives. So, but in truth, in all seriousness, punctuation and, and grammar and things in, especially in asynchronous communication in groups, makes a huge difference in how people perceive the sender. And so you want to be sure that you're you're focusing on that. You're using your best possible writing skills, and no matter what the channel is, that, that, that so that people will uh, not be put off by that and will take you seriously. So uh, syntax matters and it will affect status your status in groups a lot of times. Manage your conflict wisely. Be aware of things like the disinhibition effect for asynchronous communication, where people act a little more boldly over text and email than they would in other. Uh, situations, but uh, and manage your conflict wisely. It's okay to disagree in a group. In fact, that can be healthy. It's okay to to have different opinions and to express those and to challenge other people. But we need to do so in a way that's respectful and that is task based and not personally based. And so, just be sure you're managing your conflict wisely and communicating competently in that regard. And then think interculturally. Remember that, especially with groups working from great distances, now you you have people from all kinds of different cultures, all kinds of different backgrounds, which will affect the way that they communicate and the expectations that they have for, for how people communicate with them. So we just need to think interculturally, uh, you know, along the lines of individualistic versus uh, collectivistic and things like that. So I'll be sure you're keeping that in mind as well. And just in general, keeping good communication principles in mind is important in a virtual group, just like it would be anywhere else. Being in a virtual group does not give you an excuse to communicate poorly or to be a jerk or whatever. So okay. if you have questions about Working effectively in virtual teams, I'd be happy to answer those and discuss those with you, and I'm, and I'm always here to help. Feel free to send me an email, and I'd uh, love to discuss that with you. Happy communicating.